ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶೀಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರಣ್ಣವೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಕ್ಮರುಕ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ನಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ so we continue with the mukshupadi <coughs> anusandhana bhagavat chesha sutra number 63 bhagavat chesha tilam chesha tvatilam anya chesham kriye pradhanam marandum purandulam purandulam andariyan gayade <coughs> ಇಪ್ಪಡಿ ಕ್ರೂರಮಾನ ಅನ್ಯಶೇಷತ್ವ ಕೈಹೈ ಆತ್ಮಕ್ಕ ಪ್ರಧಾನಾಪೇಕ್ಷಿತಮೆಂದ್ರಿ ಏಳ್ಚೊನ್ನ ಅರ್ಥತ್ತೈ ಸ್ಥಿರೀಕರಿಕ್ಕಿರಾರ್ ಭಗವಚ್ಛೇಷತ್ವತ್ತಿನ ಅನ್ಯಶೇಷತ್ವ ಕೈಹೇ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಎಂದೇ ಅದಾವದೇ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀಶೇಷತ್ವತ್ತಿಲ ಕಾಟ್ಟಿಲ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಎನ್ನ ಒಣವೇ ಎನ್ನ ಭಗವಾನಕ್ಕೆ ಭಗವಾನ್ ತನಕ್ಕ ಶೇಷಮಾಯಿರುಕ್ಕು ಅದಿಲಂಕಾಟಿಲ್ ಅನ್ಯ ಅನ್ಯ ವಿಷಯತ್ತಿಲ್ ಶೇಷತ್ವ ಕೈಹೇ ಆತ್ಮಕ್ಕ ಪ್ರಧಾನಾಪೇಕ್ಷಿತ ಎಂದೈ ಸೋದಿ ಸೀನ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸೂತ್ರಸ್ ದಿ ಮೈನ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ this <coughs> jivatma or individual soul he is subservient to the paramatma alone and not to anyone else as i mentioned earlier <coughs> whenever an assertive sentence is mentioned that assertive sentence results in two negatives when explained as i gave an example earlier he is sure to come let us consider this example so when you say he is sure to come what does it mean it means that there is no chance that he will not come so there is no chance that he will not come there are two negatives so when you say the individual soul is supreme is subservient to the supreme soul alone then what does it mean it results in two negatives that means he is not subservient to anyone else <clears throat> this is one meaning second meaning is that he is also subservient to the supreme goddess shri mahalakshmi so these are the two meanings that <clears throat> emerge from the ukara which is between akara and makara but which among these two is more important is the question while it is accepted that this jivatma is subservient to the goddess or mahalakshmi also it is also to be noted that it is very important to say that the individual soul is not subservient to anyone other than the supreme lord <clears throat> so after considerable discussion 
സ്വാമി പിള്ളലോക്കാചാര്യ സേസ് ഇതിലും അന്യശേഷത്വം കഴിയേ പ്രധാനം the focus of the <coughs> meaning of pukara is that this jeevatma is not subservient to anyone other than the paramatma having said that he quotes a pashuram or a stanza <coughs> which is as follows marandum porandura mandar which is found in the namohan tiruvandadi of the alaira divya prabandham so as you all know or you may not be very familiar also <coughs> the tirumantra prakaranam and all the other prakaranams also quote extensively from the divya prabandhas and for those who who of you who are not familiar with the composition of the divya prabandhas they are 4000 in number in the sense there are 4000 stanzas and this way they are called as nalaira divya prabandham or 4000 stanzas they are divya prabandha this word divya is very important because divya literally means other world it can also mean <coughs> that which is closely associated with the supreme lord narayan that is why the chosen sites the 108 chosen sites are known as the divya deshas anangara acharya swami has very beautifully uh, explained this term divya and says the pramana prameya and pramata as they are known in shri vishnu apartments they are all divya so the chosen 100 108 sites of which 106 are in this well two that is kshira samudram and paramapadam are in the well beyond us and then several abhimana sthalas as they are called as so like it might be trinarayana puram or mail kote then they are rajamandar kudi and many other such states they are known as acharya abhimana sthalas so they are known as divya deshas because they are associated with the supreme lord narayana and those chosen sites came to be known as divya deshas because they were sung about or propitiated by the alwars who are known as the divya suris so once again you find the word divya used there and by means of what did they propitiate the divya chosen sites of divya deshas by means of the divya prabandhas or divine compositions associated with the supreme lord narayana <clears throat> so among those divya prabandhams it is very interesting to note swami namalwar who was the premier most alwar as we you know him he has composed the maximum number we can say because for tiruvai uh, mudiyar the final 1000 contains 100 to 1102 stanzas then on <coughs> on treatise called tiruviratnam has 100 stanzas periya tiruvandadi another treatise has 87 stanzas then tiruvashariyam has 7 and then tiruvai mudi which is the magnum opus contains 1102 and the second alwar is tirumangi alwar who has composed six treatises out of which 1055 more than 1100 are found in one known as periya tirumoli alone then four more which are part of what is known as yerpa in english that is the third uh, thousand among the four thousands and all the other alwars put together have contributed around 2500 among them two or three alwars have just contributed 10 10 stanzas <laughs> so it is very interesting to know all these things for example tirupan alwar only 10 stanzas known as amala nadi piran then madurakavi alwar very very interesting very unique only 11 stanzas that to about namalwar only and not about the lord that all <laughs> but my acharya used to mention many times again and again and that is the 
uniqueness of Sri Vaishnava philosophy that though Madhura Kavi Aadwar has not sung even one stanza propitiating the Supreme Lord Narayana, he is also considered a premier Aadwar and included in the group of Aadwars. That is the beauty of Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. So among them we have a great Aadwar called Tirumarishai Aadwar who has composed the Nan Mohan Tiruvindadi as it is known. The fourth hundred of the year pa thousand. <clears throat> and in that hundred stanzas, he has wonderfully mentioned about the supremacy of Lord Narayana. And as far as the life history of Tirumanshi Alvar goes, it is mentioned that he practiced all the religions. He practiced Christianity or Islam, we don't know. He practiced Jainism, he practiced Buddhism, that's what they have written. He practiced Shaiva philosophy and ultimately he, practiced, he came to practice Vaishnava philosophy after realizing the supremacy of Lord Vishnu. And in the Nan Mohan Tiruvandari, this uh, stanza is the Nan Mohan Tiruvandari means it contains 100 stanzas. In that, the 68 <coughs> stanza is as follows. Tirambel minkandir tirivaditan namam Marandum purandurama andarai Irenjium shadu arai podum ingarinam Namanum tantu do vareku vichevik. So we have a great Divya Pravanda scholar who is also present in this audience. Namely, Sri Rajagopal Swami, who belongs to Melkote, who learned the end, who memorized the entire Divya Prabandhas, 4000 Divya Prabandhas, when he was just around 14 years old. It is a great achievement. But though he has, uh, he has such a great achievement to his credit, he is extremely modest and uh, he is so <coughs> enterprising that he never shows himself off to be such a great achiever. Yeah, just I have mentioned it incidentally. So here, what does Tirumanshi Alvar say, which makes it quotable in this context by Swami Pudadokacharya? He says, Marandum Purandora Mahanadai. There are two very important issues here. One is, we worship the Supreme Lord Narayana as the Supreme. Second is, we do not worship other demigods. So two sides of the same coin or two sides of the same principle. Worshipping Lord Narayana as the Supreme and desisting from worshipping other gods, other demigods. But here, to stress the supremacy of Lord Narayana, the Alvar mentions Marandum Purandura Mandar I may forget about the Lord, Supreme Lord Narayana. That is different. But I will not approach other demigods. So that is what is mentioned. Idilam anya sheshatam kaihaye pradhanam. And this is well illustrated by an example given in the Indian context. So in the Indian context, some at some time, even a devout housewife might have a quarrel with her husband. And she may leave her, leave him and go to her parents' house to stay. But even though she is not subservient to her husband at that time, will she actually be subservient to any other male? Or will she have any infatuation for any other person? No, definitely she will not. Though she may not be devout or devote to her husband at that particular time, point of time, definitely she will not have any wish to have any other person as her husband. So here the fact is being stressed that even if a person does not worship Lord Vishnu, it is okay. He should not worship other, other demigods. 
Marandum Purandora Manda. So even forgetfully also, even by mistake also, he should not worship other demigods. That is very important concept that ex exists in Sri Vaishnava philosophy, especially the devout Sri Vaishnavas who are known as Ekantins. So in Sri Vaishnava philosophy parlance, there is a word called Paramaikanti, Ekanti and Paramaikanti. Ekanti means a person who worships the Lord Vishnu alone and nobody else. And the superlative of that is Paramai Kanti, Paramai Kanti. At no point of time he will ever, never, ever worship any other person or any other demigod other than Lord Vishnu. So that is what is mentioned in this context by saying Marandum Purandura Mamdar. It is quoted by Pridhavakacharya in this context. Either Kapraman and Kartahira, Marandum, Purandora, Mandari and Deade, Ababa de Yemekim Krasamba, the Tate, the Rimarish Piran, Arulit Tate, Tirambel, Minkandir, and Girapart, Pile Bhagavat Electionum, Shuluhira, Vadavil, the Rivaditan Namam, Marandum, Purandura, Mandari and Swami, Rudi, the Namate, Barandar, Hara Hidum. Maturu Vishay till Chesha Ritti Purna, the very Hill in the Shuluheal, Shuluheale in Gay. So in this stanza, the Ardwar actually narrates the Yamakinkara Samvada of that is found in the Adam Lopakhyana in Shibat Bhagavatam, which I am sure Keshoda Swami and all others are very, very familiar with because <coughs> it is very much stressed upon in all the Vaishnava. Uh, schools, schools of thought, whether it is Iskan or whether it is Imadva Sampradaya or Shivaishnava Sampradaya, all the Sampradayas, which are essentially Vaishnava Sampradayas only, specifically focus on the Yamakinkara Samvada, which is the nothing but the Adamido Pakhyana, which is found in Shrivan Bhagavad. So, what does it say? It says, even by mistake, if a person attains the Lord, the name of the Lord Narayana, Sanketyam, Parihasyam, Va, Stobham, Helanameva, Va. So even to make fun of somebody, in the, on the premise or in the pretext of making fun of somebody, if a person utters the name of the Lord, or <clears throat> on the pretext of just an expression, Stopa means, as I mentioned earlier, you say, gosh, oh my God, you say, Jesus Christ, somebody might say. So it is all, they are not actually remembering Jesus Christ or when they say God, they don't mean to say the name of God. They say, oh my God, what is happening? It is only an expression which is known as Stopa in Sanskrit. So as a Stopa Akshara also, if a person mentions the name of the Lord, or Pari has him to make fun of somebody, he may say something. Like, for example, they may say, if a person is <clears throat> very truthful, so in the, among the youths it happens, and <clears throat> when uh, people who are not honest make fun of an honest person. In our younger days, they say, hey, he's a Gandhi, don't, uh, uh, don't go with him. Gandhi means a person who is honest, like Mahatma Gandhi was. But here it is used in a derogatory sense to say that this person is not given to such corrupt practices. So when many people who are given to corrupt practices are there, the honest person is odd man out. He becomes the odd man out and he becomes the subject of ridicule. So when such a ridiculing is done, also in on the pretext of ridiculing somebody, if the person mentions the name of the Lord, even that shall be considered by the Lord as a pretext to bless him and give him moksha. That is what is mentioned in the Yamakinkara Samvada. So there also what happens? The <coughs> uh, 
ಸಂವಾದಿಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ that the name lord narayana or the name narayana is the supreme 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 name that among all the names that is why we said uh, in the dwadashakshari we say it is inferior to the ashtakshari because it does not have the name lord of lord narayana or the, the exact name narayana therefore it is very important that is what is mentioned sankhetyam parihasyam va ಸ್ತೋಭಂ ಹೇಳನಮೇ ವೈಕುಂಠ ನಾಮ ಗ್ರಹಣ ಸರ್ವಾಗ್ರಹಣಿ ಮರಂದಾರ್ಹಳಾಹಿಲು ಮತ್ತೊರು ವಿಷಯತಿ ಶೇಷವೃತ್ತಿ ಪಣ್ಣಾರವರ ಹಳ್ಳಿ ಶೋ ಹೇ ಆದೇ ದೇರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ forgets the name of the lord narayana he will not utter the name of other devatas that is very important aspect ittalta then we go to the 65th sutra ittal tanakkum pirarkum urittanne indirade ishvara sheshamana aatma vastukku svasheshatva parasheshatvam galirandum anya sheshatva mahayade ಉಭಯತ್ತೆಯಂ ಯೂಕಾರಂ ಕಳಿತ್ ಕಳಿಕಿರದು ಎನ್ನ ಸೊಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಗಮಿಕಿರಾರ್ ಇತ್ತಾಲ್ ತನಕ್ಕು ಬಿರಕ್ಕು ಉರಿತನ್ನೆ ಎನ್ಗಿರದು ಸೋ ಹಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಸಮರೈಸಸ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಇತ್ತಾಲ್ ತನಕ್ಕು ಬಿರಕ್ಕು ಶೇಷವನ್ನಿ ಸೋ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಸಫೈಸ್ ಟು ಸೇ it suffices to say that this jeevaatma is not subservient to himself so i am not subservient to me only neither am i subservient to me nor to any other jeevaatma except for the supreme lord narayana and when you say narayana it includes goddess lakshmi also so two aspects are being negated here which are the two aspects that this jeevaatma or any jeevaatma for that matter he is not subservient to he himself as well as he is not subservient to any other jeevaatma except for paramatma or the supreme lord narayana and his concern god is lakshmi so this is the purport of the meaning of ukara adavadu anya sheshatva nivartakamana ivukaratale ಅನ್ಯರಿಲ್ ಅನ್ಯತಮತ್ವ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಅನ್ಯತಮತ್ವ ಅವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಮಾಯಾರೇ ಇವು ಆತ್ಮವಸ್ತು ತನಕ್ಕೂ ಮುರಿತನ್ನೇ ತನ್ನೆಯೊಳಿಂದ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ಹೆಡಕ್ಕೂ ಮುರಿತನ್ನೇ ಎನ್ನು ಮಿಡಂ ಸೊಲ್ಲು ಹಿರದೆಂಗೈ ಆಹ ಉಕಾರತ್ತೈ ಅರುಳಿಚ್ಚೈದಾರಾಯ್ತು ಉಕಾರಾರ್ಥತ್ತೈ ಅರುಳಿಚ್ಚೈದಾರಾಯ್ತು ಸೊ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನೈದರ್ ಸಬ್ಸರ್ವಿಯನ್ ಟು ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾರ್ ಐ ಮೈ ಸಬ್ಸರ್ವಿಯನ್ ಟು ಎನಿ ಅದರ್ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ so these two aspects are to be understood by the <coughs> alphabet come word ukara so this summarizes the meaning of the word ukara or u and then further he goes on to explain the meaning of makara makaram iravattanja maksharamai gyanavaajiyumai rikkayale aatma vaichullu hiradi ಅನಂತರಂ ತೃತೀಯಾಕ್ಷರಮಾನ ಮಕಾರಾರ್ಥತ್ತೈರುಳಿಚ್ಚೈರಾರ್ ಮಕಾರಂ ಇನ್ನ ತೊಡಂಗಿ ಅದಾವದೆ ಭೂತಾನಿ ಚವ ಭೂತಾನಿ ಚ ಕವರ್ಗೇಣ ಚವರ್ಗೇಣ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಚ ತವರ್ಗೇಣ ತವರ್ಗೇಣ ಜ್ಞಾನಗಂಧಾದಯಸ್ತಥಾ 
मनस् मनस्पकारेण प्रकारेण स्वहृति बकारेण भकारेण महां प्रकृतिच्य आत्मा तो समकारेण पंचविश प्रकर्ति गिरपड़ी पृथिव्यादि प्रकृत्यंतमान इतनाकुम वाचकमायकारादिभकारातमान इतनाक्षरमे मकार इतमक्षर मन ज्ञानेन्ने मनुवबोधने निष्पन्नमे ज्ञानवाचियुमे पंचविशोम पुरुष पंचविश आत्मापतीपड़ी पंचविशकना विज्ञात्मा पुरुष विज्ञातामरेकन विजानीयाद्यंगिपड़ी ज्ञानस्वरूपनुमा ज्ञानगुणकनुमायर आत्मा वेरी ब्यूटिफुली त्रिलोकाचार्य हेज एक्सप्लेन हाउ मकार denotes the individual soul that is known as jiva makaram 25 aksharamai gyanavaachiyuma irukkum so you have to know the sanskrit varnamala well <laughs> to understand this statement so in sanskrit varnamala you have two basic categories one is known as swaras a a i i u u r r l r a i o o These are known as swaras. Am aha are known as yoga aha or yoga aha. They are included in the swaras only. And then you have the vyanjanas or the or as they as are there as they are currently translated. Swaras are translated as vowels, and vyanjanas are translated as consonants. It is not the right translation. Anyway, it serves the practical purpose, so we go with it. So, what is swara and what is vyanjan? According to the Yakarana Shastra or the grammar, science of grammar, swatantrataya ucharyamano varna swarai kuchyate. So that which is, well, that which one is able to pronounce independently is known as swara. So that is why it is known as swatantrataya ucharyamana varna, and that which is <coughs> that which one can pronounce with the help of swaras only are known as vyanjanas, or they may be translated as consonants in English. So how many consonants are there? There are thirty-three consonants. Among them, you have twenty-five consonants which are classified as vargiya vyanjanas that means they actually fall under specific categories so guttural parietals then then dentals labials and one more lingual or something like that so we call it as kantya kantha talu uh, murdha danta and uh, ostho <coughs> so here what happens these 25 alphabets are known as vargiya vyanjanas or consonants that are classified consonants and then you have eight more ya ra la va cha sha sa ha so these are once again combinations so among the 25 the 25th alphabet the first five are ka kha ga ga na cha cha da they are guttrals cha cha da da na palatals ताथा दादाना ले ताथा दादाना तब इस लिंगियल्स ताथा दादाना डेंटल्स पापा पापा मार लेबियल्स देर इज अ वेरी साइंटिफिक वेल वेल एस्टेब्लिश्ड साइंटिफिक रीजन बिहाइंड दिस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ कोर्स आई वाज अर्लीर इन द लेक्चर टुडे आई वाज मेंशनिंग अबाउट दिस बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू टॉक अबाउट द इंग्लिश अल्फ so kindly don't mistake me this is not to be little <laughs> the english alphabet there is no logical reason why the alphabets are arranged in a particular order y a after b 
why C after D, then why D, E, etc. So it has it has come to us in a tradition. We follow the tradition and be done with it. <laughs> Nobody questions it. Whereas when you take the case of Sanskrit alphabet, uh, you will see how scientific it is. Because if you draw the a curve like this from the this portion to this portion, so this is the bottommost point, which can be shown like this, and this is the topmost point, and this is the middle point. So all the alphabets that are announced by a human being fall in this curve. So Parini, Sage Parini has very beautifully traced this. And the first sutra of the Vyakarana Shastra is A, E, U, D, A, E, and U. So A is the bottommost point, E is the topmost point, U is the endmost point. All the alphabets for and <clears throat> these three are the basics for us. First have after we have A, O, A is A plus is A, A plus O is O, A plus A is I, and A plus O is O. So they are all combinatory vowels. So basic vowels we have only three: A, E, and U. And then R and L, that is something. Then Kaka Gagana, Kara, Gatrals, Chacha Jajanga, Palatals, then Lingials, then Dentals, then Dentals. So it's totally systematic. From If you take the how the sound emanates from the human speech box, as they call it, it is very, very scientific, it's very well arranged. So even Kaka Gagana, you have Ka, which is unvoiced, and then it's Mahaprana Kha. Then Ga is a voiced vowel. Then the Mahaprana Gha. Then Ga is a <coughs> guttural associated with a nasal sound. So all the vargas or categories are nasal sounds. The first are all unvoiced or unaspirated. All the second uh, alphabets are unvoiced but aspirated. Third, voice and voice and aspirated. Fourth is voice and aspirated. So every way you classify it, it's unique. It's extremely systematic. This is as far as the science of the phonetics is concerned. Coming to the symbolic meaning of this. According to Sankhya philosophy, and also accepted in Vishishta Veta philosophy, you have 25 tattvas. Prakriti mahan prakriter mahan ne tato ahankara tasmat ganascha shodashaka tasmat api shodashaka te pancha bhif pancha bhuta. To simplify it, prakriti tattva, mahat tattva, and ahankara tattva, you have three. Then you have 11 indriyas or 11 sense organs. Five sense organs, five motor organs, and manas. So 16 plus 3, 19. Then you have the Panchamahabhutas. Earth, air, water, Panchatanmatras, and Panchamahabhutas. <clears throat> so it becomes 25. 19 plus 5 is 25. Then 25th is Jiva. Wow. So Makaram Miravatanja Vada Aksharamai. Makara is the 25th alphabet among the vowels. And it actually denotes jnana or inter knowledge, which can be taken in the sense of consciousness. So symbolically also the 25th alphabet is Makara, which means knowledge. How uh, so my Manwad Mamani very beautifully explains. And each one alphabet represents one tattva of the Sankhya philosophy, which is accepted in Vishishta Dvaita philosophy as it is. Therefore, this Makara is very, very, very significant. And he says how each Varga represents one aspect of the Prakriti. 
ഭൂത അതായത് ഭൂതാനിച്ച കവർഗേണ സോ ദി കവർഗ കാഖ ഗാഖ റെപ്രസെന്റ് ദി പഞ്ചമഹാഭൂത അർത്ത് വാട്ടർ ഏർ ഫയർ ആൻഡ് ആകാശ റീച്ചർ ചവർഗേണ ഇന്ദ്രിയാണിച്ച ചവർഗ റെപ്രസെന്റ്സ് ദീസ് ഫയർ ഇന്ദ്രിയാസ് ടവർഗേണ ടവർഗേണ ജ്ഞാനഗന്ധാദയസ് തഥാ സോ ദി ഫൈവ് ജ്ഞാനേന്ദ്രിയാസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ദി ഫൈവ് ഗുണാസ് ദീസ് ശബ്ദസ്പർശ രൂപരസ ഗന്ധാസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ മനഃ ഭക്കാരേണ തു അഹംകൃതി ഭക്കാരേണ ഭക്കാരേണ മഹാൻ പ്രകൃതി ഉച്ചത്തെ പ്രകൃതി ആൻഡ് മഹത്വ ആൻഡ് അഹങ്കാര ആൻഡ് മനസ് ദീസ് ആർ റെസ്പെക്ടീവ്ലി ഡിനോട്ടഡ് ബൈ ആൻഡ് ഫൈനലി ആത്മാ തു സമകാരേണ പഞ്ചവിംശ പ്രകീർത്തി ആൻഡ് ദി ട്വന്റി ഫിഫ്ത് ആൽഫബെറ്റ് അമാൻ ദി വെവൽസ് വിറ്റ് ഇസ് മക്കാര denotes the jivaatma em gira padiye prathivyaadi prakrityantamana 24 tattvatkam vaachakamayirindulla kakaraadi bhakarantamana 24 aksharamam ponannike all the 24 alphabets which occur before makara denote insentient entities makara since it denotes a sentient entity or a conscious entity has to denote the jivaatma alone and not anything else why makara alone why can why not take bhakara or akara or some some other alphabet to denote the <coughs> denote the jivaatma the answer to that is given by saying <coughs> makaram iravattanja maksharamai manajnane ingiradhatu vileyadu മനു അവബോധനേങ്കിരധാത്തുവിലേയാദൽ why should i call this object as a bottle only why not call denote this object by the word pen and denote an object called the pen by the word bottle what is it that actually binds us to do so is there any reason there is no apparent reason except for the reason that when you look up the oxford dictionary or the cambridge dictionary you find that certain words are denoted de- or derived from certain roots available in greek and latin but all the words do not have such a basis in sanskrit except for some exceptions all the words are denoted by roots on b from roots on b so why do you call part krishna as krishna because karshati iti krishna it is derived from the root karsh karshati manamsi akarshati iti krishna karsh means to attract so he is a lord who attracts the mind of the minds of the devotees similarly when you say rama what does it mean it is derived from the root ramu kridayam that means to entertain namante yoginah yasmin iti ramah ramayati iti ramah one who actually entertains the minds of his devotees one so gives great bliss to his devotees when meditated upon that is why he is known as rama then hari hi why is he known as hari harati iti hari hi harir harati papani so one who takes away by force what does he take away by force he takes away all our sins even if a wicked man meditates upon lord hari or 
remembers Lord Hari. That Hari is, his nature is such that he will take away all the sins of a person who remembers him. So, Harati iti Hari, he hrin harane iti dhatuhu tatravartate. Similarly here, two roots are instrumental in deriving the word manas or ma. Managnyane. Mana to know or manu avabodhane. Both are having the same meaning in the sense to know. In giradhatu vinayad and nishpan. So they, derive, they are derived from a root which means to know. Jnanavajiyama irikkayade. Pancha vinshoyam purushadin. He shows several <coughs> references from the authentic texts of Sri Vaishnava philosophy and also the Vedic texts. Pancha vimshoyam purushaha, pancha vimshaha, atma bhavati yengira padiye. Then he too shows, from, shows the references, he quotes the references from the Vedas. Vijnana atma purushaha in the Upanishads we will see. Then you have in the Chandogya Upanishad or some other Upanishad. Vijnata So he is known as the Vijnanatma or Vijnata. Who possesses Vijnana or consciousness. So therefore, there are enough evidences in our ancient scriptures, including the Vedas, Puranas, Ityasas, and also the treatises of our Purvacharyas, and also the sanction of grammar, Sanskrit grammar, to establish that the word Makara can denote the Jivatma. This is the purport of this sutra. Then he also explains one very important and unique aspect of Vishishta Advaita philosophy, which says the Jivatma is not only of the nature of Jnana knowledge, but he also possesses knowledge as an attribute. So in Sanskrit, we call it as Dharma Bhuta Jnana, and it is translated in philosophical parlance as <coughs> attributive consciousness. So the analogy given to understand this is as follows. <coughs> you have a beautiful lamp. So the lamp is of the nature of light. So it is light itself. So you don't need another light to show that a lamp exists. And then it also possesses light as its attribute because the light that emanates from the lamp is useful in us seeing other things. Therefore, we say that knowledge or consciousness is an attribute of the Jivatma. At the same time, the Jivatma itself is consciousness or of the nature of consciousness. So the consciousness that is as an attribute of the Jivatma is known as attributive consciousness or Dharma Bhuta Jnana. Whereas the consciousness that is of the nature of the Jivatma is known as Dharmi Bhuta Jnana. Attributive consciousness is not as Dharma Bhuta Jnana. Whereas the consciousness that is the Nature of the Atma is known as Dharmi Bhuta Jnana. So the Atma is Jnana Swarupa as well as Jnana Gunaka. He is of the nature of knowledge as well as possesses talent as an attribute. Just like a lamp, he is of the nature of light and also possesses light as an attribute. This is one very unique aspect of Vishishta Advaita philosophy because other philosophies like Advaita accept that. The Atma is of the nature of knowledge, but they don't accept the Atma as an attribute called consciousness. The Nyaya philosophy and Madhva philosophy mentioned that knowledge is only an attribute, but it does not 
the atma is of, not of the nature of knowledge. But the uniqueness of Vishta Dvaita philosophy is that we accept consciousness both as the nature and the attribute of the, of the Jivatma. Same applies to Supreme Lord also. Indira Padiye Jnana Swarupa Numai Jnana Gunaka Numai Rikkira Atma Vichullu Hiradu Kirchum Nasheshatum Sarvasadhar Namahi Ade Tividhatma Vargatthiyum Midile Shuddhavendu Hiyade Arulicca Ihirar Kirudhan Samashtiva Jakam Jatye Kavachanam Ittal Atma Jnata Vindu Dehattire Vyavarthi Shuddhita Itu so these shlokas, these sutras deal with a new concept. So here I will conclude today. Any discussions, feedback, questions? Are Swami, can you explain the, the, you were talking about the different vargas, the vargiya uh, vyanjanas, the yes. consonants. Can you explain the word apavarga? Philosophically, apavarga. Apavarga. <laughs> apavarga has nothing to do with this. Apavarga means moksha or liberation. It, uh, that word has nothing to do with the this classification of the vargas of the alphabets. <laughs> it, it's just that I've I've heard some people say that each of the uh, these each of these uh, letters in pavarga means something, and therefore apavarga is oh. beyond them. I I don't know. No, oh, that's not that's not correct. Okay. At least I have not come across any interpretation like that. We regularly use the word apavarga in Vedanta philosophy, which means apavarga means moksha. So even uh, in Nyaya philosophy, that is the word used to denote moksha. So apavarga essentially means moksha only. And nothing to do with the vargas or classification of the alphabets. <laughs> okay. So uh um, my other question is, uh, it seems like uh, the, one should study the Datupata of, uh, of Panini in order to understand the meanings of words. So can you yes, explain about Datupata? And also, I think uh, Nirukta is an important uh, book for understanding. Nirukta, Nirukta is considered a Vedanga and it gives the etymology of the words that are contained in the Vedas, not in classical sense. So the meaning of the words of classical Sanskrit is to be known by, so when we talk about knowing the meanings of words, if you have to know the etymology, etc., you have to know etymology and morphology. You have to know, you have to learn it from Vyakarana. That is the Parnini of Vyakarana only. But overall meaning, if you want to know, there are other means of knowing also. But etymology, morphology, etc., has to be known by studying Vyakarana. So, but when you when you look up a when you look up a, a root of a word in Datupat, it gives also another a meaning, another root. Another. Another root. Another. What do I could not say? In uh, in Datupat, it, it 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 gives a meaning for the root for each root. And then, and then you sometimes it gives more than one meaning, and you can look up more roots because of that. So it becomes. Uh, no, there is, a, for example, there are several, several <coughs> datus which have many meanings and mutually connect, connected meanings. For example, chare jati bhakshaneva. There is a root called chare, which means to move and to eat, and also move while eating. <laughs> So there are, there are several uniquenesses, peculiarities, etc. For example, the word Diva, which is uh, the root of the word Deva, has seven or eight meanings. So, and for example, I was mentioning, it will come here also later in this work. <coughs> the word Shrihi is derived by seven roots. Shrihi, 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 Shrihi. Etc. Etc. So that is the uniqueness of Sanskrit language that one word can have so many meanings within the framework of grammar and the associated rules. So ultimately, once my father was 
mentioning and he keeps mentioning. Now also, a model Sri Vaishnava, the education of a model Sri Vaishnava spans for about 45 years. <laughs> because first he has to master all the Vedas, the Vedangas, then all the Samani Shastras like Nyaya, Vyakarna, Mimamsa. Then he has to come to Vedanta, study the Shri Bhasham, Gita Bhasham, etc. Then he has to master all the 4,000 Divya Prabandhas, then their commentaries, then all the Rahasya Granthas and their commentaries. So to do that, if he does it in a very uh, proper manner with utmost dedication, it will take him about 45 years to do so. <laughs> but uh, his stature will be so high that nobody can equal him in any manner. Of course, we don't have, we have had such people like Arnangaracharya of the Kanchi, uh, of Kanchi Puram, who lived about uh, 30 years ago, until about 30 years or 40 years ago. There have been such people. Even uh, our Purvacharyas, like Manavada, Mamani, Vedanta, Deshka, etc., they have also been there. And uh, if you take the Sri Bhasham alone, uh, in the, according to the critical edition, which my father published when he was in the Academy of Sanskrit Research. We see that Ramananda Acharya had, has quoted from nearly 200 works. So did he have a library online or offline? Even a physical library for that matter, where did he have? No books were there in those days. So he had memorized all the 200 works due to which he could quote from them free. Even Manavan Mavani has quoted so many from so many works as you can see here. So they had memorized all of them by while they were young. So it's not impossible task. But their memory power was so great. And also they were taught in such a manner, which makes it more all the more unique and wonderful. Swami, um, our question, Swami, is even though uh, one is a very staunch Sri Vaishnava. And if you go to a temple and there are so many other uh, other gods, you're, you're going to Pradakshana Varapa when you come doing Pradakshana. How do you, what do we do at, at that situation? <laughs> we have Maha, so that's... Um, uh, the, 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 what they have mentioned is the ideal situation and if possible, we follow that. Otherwise, there is a statement which says Sarvadeva Namaskaraha Keshavam Priti That is the uh, that is the purport of the several adhikaranas of Shibhasya also. So ultimately, <coughs> to any god you prostrate, the prostration reaches the Supreme Lord because he is the Antaryami of all the other gods. Mm. <coughs> so when you say when we perform the Vaidika Karmas, we say Indra is Agni is Vaha, Soma is Vaha, and several other, even uh, Rudra, Pashupati is Vaha, etc. <coughs> In all those cases, the, it has been well proven based on the Pramanas available in the Shastras that the one who is worshipped. So he is the Antarya of all the other gods. So even if a particular god, I mean demigod, ultimately the Namaskara will reach the Supreme Lord only. Yatha Akasha Patitam Toyam Yatha Gachati Sagaram Sarvadeva Namaskara Keshavam Pratikachati. That is what we tell in the Sandhyanam every day. So those who perform, they tell it every day <coughs> in the Sandhyanam, which means so suppose. You are in India, assuming that you are in India. Rain will fall in uh, Karnataka, in Tamil Nadu, in Andhra Pradesh, <laughs> in North India, South India, Western India. So where will all the rain go? All the rain will go to the rivers. And all the rivers, one way or the other, they will <laughs> uh, culminate in the ocean only. So just as Akasha, Patitam, Toyam, wherever the water may fall in whichever geographical location, ultimately it has to reach the ocean. Similarly, Akasha Patitam Toyam Mitha Gachiti Sagaram Sarvadeva Namaskaraha Keshavam Patitachi. So that's what is mentioned.
ಶ್ರೀಮಾರಾಯಣಭೂತ್ಭೂಮೌರಾಮಾಂಜಿವಾಕರಿಂಚಾರ್ದಿನಂಕುಶೈಭೂತೆ ಭೋಜ ಸ